what I would like to demonstrate is a solution to a problem that was sort of bugging me. Uh, it's an artificial problem in some sense, but um, it, it does have application to more complex situations that you might find yourself in. It's 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 a complex alignment problem basically. And um, what I what I wanted to do was I wanted to bring this vertice here into alignment with um, this edge here. Um, so so one way of doing it obviously is I could just um, double tap G and, and edge slide it in and eyeball it until I'm satisfied that it you know it lays on that line. Um, and I can zoom in, zoom in, and keep going, keep going to the maximum resolution of zooming in and and then position it and, and that that's actually quite a reasonable solution for Blender because it's essentially an eyeballing application anyway but and most people are not going to notice that that kind of level of accuracy but let's say you wanted to be take a bit more of an engineering approach and you wanted to be a bit more accurate about what you're doing you've got to take a bit more of a conceptual route in that case and um, how to do it is um, you need to create what's called some helper geometry. And this is in CAD programs, helper geometry or, or construction geometry is uh, uh, vertices, lines, or, or shapes which you create um, to um, help you out in building the model. But actually, in the end, are not not used in the final model. You, you can delete them or hide them. And, and in, we can use actually the same approach here in Blender. We can create some helper geometry, which we can then remove, but it, it, it gets us to where we want to go. So, <coughs> so. We want what we want really. We want want that 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 edge and that edge. We want those edges intersecting. But because they're right now on the opposite sides of the cube or, or the wonky, the wonky cube as I call it, um, you need to somehow bring them into contact with each other. So the easiest way to do that is we can just take those that edge there and we can go into side view and we can extrude it out and come across like that. And because this face is fortunately. Um, coplanar and on top of that orthogonal to the, both the x and the z axis. That's super handy. That that already is a major um, you know problem solved for us right there, and takes away a lot of pain. So all we need to do now is we can just take any one of these points on this um, face here because it's because they're coplanar, then and just take them and we can just scale x zero and bang. Look at that. We we now got um, two edges. We got the edge crossing over exactly what we wanted. That edge there, intersection of that edge there, right there's an intersection point. Um, now, if I had this, okay, now we to actually, we, what we really want is we want, want to create a vertice at, the, at that intersection point. That's what we need. We need a vertice there. So, if I had auto merge and split edges switched on when I did that operation, or, or when I aligned that, those edges, it would automatically create vertices there for me. But because I didn't have it switched on, I have to do it manually. So, so to do that, we switch. So, auto merge on, split edges on, and then select one of the vertices that belong to those edges. Only one is sufficient, and then you go hit the G key, and then without moving the mouse, left click, and that and that then creates the vertice there where you need it. So that, and then once we've done that, pretty much we're, we're on the home stretch. So all we need to do now is we we don't need the helper geometry anymore. We we can remove that. Um, and with that um, vertice in position, all we can do now is just send our 3D cursor to it and just scale Y0, bring the that edge along there, scale Z0 and match it up together. There you go. It's, it's absolutely perfect there. And suddenly now we have that vertice in the opposite side of the cube aligned to that edge there. Perfect. And we can take it further, we can join them, for example, we can take that face now and we can go into a different view mode, we can go into the uh, view mode there, for example, and we can go say something like that and, and extrude outwards and we can keep moving forward that way. And when you have geometry that you know, has a strange alignment and vertices are not where you like them, this is one technique to get you across the line. But what would happen if um, we had something more complex, so let's let's make it a bit harder. So now let's take um, this rebuild our cube, let's return it to restore the cube. Okay, so we, we, we restore the cube. Okay, we're back to where we were, and the edge was out here somewhere, right? So that's back to where we were. But this time, this coplanar face, we're going to ruin that. We're going to just throw it out of whack. Let's let's really just mess this cube up. So. There we go. So now we have a completely 
wonky cube. That's a 100% wonky cube. It's not a single face on that scoplanar anymore. What do you do now? How if we wanted to do the same thing as before, we wanted to bring that edge into that align with that edge there. How do we do it? We can't use the trick we did before because there's nothing coplanar here anymore to, to align our, our vertices. So, so but, 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 but there are some additional tools in our cabinet. So what we do is go do the same things things before. Take take the two vertices which we extruded before and do the same thing again. Extrude them out, which is great. Um, I was in view mode, but fortunately it takes the x-axis as well, so that's good. So now I've created a plane there, which is nice. But the thing is I need to intersect uh, with this edge, a plane that incorporates this edge here. So the, the easiest plane that I can see that does that is something like this. This corner is a triangle, because any triangle is coplanar by definition. So I create a, a plane in there, and now I have two planes. I have that one and that one, and intersecting. And so what I need to do now, though, is I need to find out where they cross over, where this line crosses through this plane here. This line here crosses through this plane here. That is not a trivial problem, but with Booleans it becomes easy. So what we do is we need to take out these two planes and as separate objects and uh, do a Boolean operation on them, and that will give us the solution. So, so we'll separate them out first. So P hit the P keys. Let's separate that plane out. This plane here. So again, P key, and then go back to object mode. We can hide the wonky cube now, and now we're left with these two planes. And all we need to do now is we do a Boolean. So select the object, go into Boolean, and this time we select the other plane. There we go. And we use a difference operation, correct, and apply. And go back to edit. Uh, so object mode, and we can remove this plane now. And we're left with this little piece here, which is actually incorporates our reference vertice, which is right there. Nice. So <coughs> we can return the cube unhide it and we can f get our plane, our cube, join them again, make them one object, go back into edit mode and x-ray mode so we can see where we are and we can see indeed there is our reference vertice right on that edge, lovely. So we have to do a bit more work, we, because it's the, we joined the two objects it's going to create some redundant vertices so and edges, so that edge is definitely redundant, we don't need that, we can remove that edge there so we can sorry I made a mistake then I actually that was a boo-boo so we need to move that edge all right so now we can actually join this edge up again and we can see also down the bottom there you can see that there we have to merge those as well merge them we don't need to really merge that because we're going to remove that plane later on anyway so let's just not merge those in fact fact actually didn't have to merge those that was unnecessary so just un not merge them like that because what we do now is we can actually remove the remove this face completely remove it and but we're still left with our reference vertices and we don't have any unreferenced vertices anymore so now we can just join the faces up again like so and we have a reference verse here, and we're back to the same spot before. So we can now take this uh, guy over here, and we can bring him in and join him. All we do that is the same operation as we had earlier. We just put our 3D cursor in the position, and so scale Y zero. Oh, sorry, what am I doing? Just got to select the vertices first. So scale Y zero, and scale Z zero, and we are there. There we go. We've aligned it up. We can now join those again. And we can do the same operation we did before. We can go into view mode and align that. And we can extrude it. So that is that. Um, it's a nice solution. It, especially when you have geometry that's definitely out of alignment and get all strange angles. Um, and it, this technique, while it seems a bit abstract here, when you have a much more complex model, um, it becomes useful to know that 
these little tricks to align things. I hope that was helpful.